Linda Ives turned this witness over to a local investigator who took him to the FBI. The FBI immediately put this witness into protective custody, gave him a polygraph test, which he passed, and opened their investigation. We uh, didn't realize there was anybody else out there at first. We were, just like I said, goofing off. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we came up on, or didn't really come up on, we noticed there were people on the track. So a flashlight come on and then go back off. Uh, they weren't looking in our direction, but we could see the light. And so we kind of quieted down and snuck up a little bit closer to see what was going on. And there was five individuals uh, standing on the tracks. One thing that struck my curiosity is uh, at the time my mother was dating uh, an attorney named Dan, uh, Dan Harmon. I knew him well enough to recognize him. There were uh, two more individuals that uh, a few minutes after we got there uh, were walking down the railroad tracks that had a rifle uh, and what looked to be a flashlight. And they were more or less kind of minding their own business. Uh, and when they realized someone else was on the tracks, uh, they stopped and was fixing to turn around when someone, uh, or Danny, motioned for them to come closer uh, over to where they were. Uh, they hesitated and uh, eventually ended up uh, walking on towards the rest of the group. While my head was turned, I heard a, what sounded like a gunshot. I saw a flash, as you would expect, with a gunshot at night. We were pretty much terrified and bolted and ran. Other witnesses corroborated that evidence. I know that Dan Harmon went down there, because I was down the road from there, sent an automobile. I do know that a drop was made. I've uh, absolutely 100% unequivocally made there that night. The people at the track that night, to my knowledge, were Dan Harmon, Keith McCaskill, Larry Rochelle. I do know that the boys were watching the drop site, okay? And they got curious as to what was being dropped there. 